Hello, Billy the Artist here, and we're doing The Incredibles. We've already done Mr. Incredible, so check that out. Uh, link in the cards and descriptions. How to draw today, Mrs. Incredible, Elastigirl. That is, Helen Parr is her name, but she is voiced by the actress Holly Hunter. So, today we are doing Mrs. Incredible, and we're going to crack right in. But again, do like and subscribe for more videos. Do check out how to draw Mr. Incredible, which would be quite good fun for you. But we're going to start, and I've done this kind of freehand before. Uh, again, just showing you the simple basics. This is quite light, but I am going to divide my page into quarters and if you use a ruler rather than doing it freehand you know you've kind of got the sections right but anyway now we can use the squares and the shapes on how to place everything so we are going to put a box we're going to use boxes and shapes rectangles circles cylinders and ellipses to kind of place everything so there's a box for the head so here we've got a little rectangle which is going to be Elastigirl's waist and we need the box for his shoulders and then her left arm her hand comes down to the kind of the center so we want a rectangle there and we need another rectangle there for her arm and a hand we can just put a little rectangle there now again, rather than boxes, I'm going to do a triangle. So a bit like a skirt, like you would see on uh, a lady's kind of icon. So we've got, now we need a right arm, and a right hand is going to come down to here. And a, so we need that going back, and a rectangle there. Now these are quite light as we go in because we're going to do a more detailed drawing. As I did with Mr. Incredible, I'm going to use colour again. So now we need, we can put, you can even just do stick man in a sense. So you draw that line down there, you know that's where a left leg's going to go. But then over to a right knee and then a leg comes down because they are quite thin. So we're going to just put a little rectangle in there and a rectangle there and then we can put a bit of a rectangle in there and then that's where the foot goes so there very quickly we have some shapes down and I've done them quite lightly so you might have struggled to see the ones down here so you'll see as I build up the detail now though for the actual figure of Mrs Incredible so we can see here that a head inside this box here is a nice kind of oval shape and we've got a neck is going to just come up there you've got the little collar and then we need the top of a hair the top of a head is there and we've got the shape of a hair coming round this kind of there's an oval shape as it curls around the side of a head and then a chin comes to a point just above a neck and so a left cheek goes out we've got the point where a hair is here where the parting joins and goes either way on a head and then her ear is quite low down she's just kind of looking up in this image so again you've got that d shape there for that ear again opposite on this side same level she's not got a tilted head you've got a little c there for her ear now if we draw a center line down the middle of that gap that's where her nose is and we can draw in the shape of her mask now her eye comes right to the center line but the mask goes past so the mask in a sense is like a big pair of lips so you could draw a box in completely for the mask and then draw that shape in afterwards or 
you can draw in, like I say, that's just like a big M, like a big pair of lips. Now the bottom bit is like a W. You see the W shape coming round. So we can further a mask round and then that goes to above a nose, the bridge of a nose, and then that comes around and goes to the side there. Now a nose, she's got the same kind of couple of little creases. We need a hair to go around and then up and over. And that goes off and then comes down. We've got a neck, his shoulders are just slightly off the horizontal. So we've got a slight diagonal line there for a shoulder line. And then a hair comes off the top, goes out and round. Now again, her eyes, we've just got these little ellipses inside. And she's looking up and a pupil is more to this side of that ellipse and she's kind of looking up in this direction. So we can just indicate a little pupil. Again, same on this side. We do a little ellipse shape, a little bit flatter underneath and then her eye is looking kind of up and again leave a tiny little dot and we're going to fill this in with felt tip pen in a bit anyway. Our nose, she's got this lovely little triangle shape for a nose. Two little dots where her nostrils are and then a mouth and you've got a kind of diagonal shadow there but a mouth is just again a bit of an oval so you draw an oval but with points at the end rather than rounding them off and you can put the top lip in remember the little kind of M on the in between the middle of the top of the lip and then that goes down and then she's got a little curve for the top of a bottom lip and then you've just got a teeth inside. So that's quite quickly you can see her head appearing quite easily as we build up the form and the shape. So let's get that a little bit better and now we need inside we need the hair coming off further so you've just got that little kick up and there we have the basic outline of Mrs Incredible's head she's just about to leap into action isn't going to be fun seeing The Incredibles 2. It's been a long time since the first Incredibles <clears throat> and this is going to be a good film but anyway you're here to learn how to draw Mrs Incredible. So now we have, we'll start with the belt, we'll use the reference point of a belt in the centre. So you just want this slight curve in the rectangle that you put in and curve that going up And then you've got the V coming up to under a right left arm. Then here you can bring down the top part of a chest and you've got the curve and the shape underneath which will be shadowed and then you want the Incredibles logo which is just a very simple ellipse. And we've got the dot on the eye at the top 
So you do the full ellipse, then you put the block in for the I, and then on this side you've got a D, thin at the top, thick at the bottom, <clears throat> and on this side it's a C. I'm going to go over this with a felt tip pen and then I'm going to colour it in the same as we did Mr Incredible. Now her arm as it comes down as you can see her elbow is level with the middle of her chest down here so that's where the kind of glove comes as well. So we'll start with the glove putting these lines down gives you the basis and so using the boxes you don't have to follow each line you can literally you can start down here now and work your way up it doesn't matter so because she's a lasty girl she's kind of stretchy so her arms are a little bit longer sometimes and not fully always in proportion so you can stretch things out and it doesn't matter overly with elastic girl so you've got the curve of a wrist coming down to a very thin wrist and the glove goes down to there then you've got her arm goes there where her elbow joint is and then her arm just bends out a little bit now a hand you've got these lines down here that just help you so just draw a simple rectangle for that finger <clears throat> and then you can just indicate the lines and then the little finger finishes off and that's how simple you can actually draw that hand in very quickly and the thumb just comes off and the thumb in a sense is a little bit like a triangle that you can see there a very tiny little triangle so now here we're going to do a left leg and so the top we need that curve coming down you've essentially just got a V here And that's going to go to the top out from under the waistband coming down. And you can see they're just slightly different heights. And then the leg is curving right the way down. The knee is underneath this hand at this point here. And that's where the centre point, where the little in curve of the knee goes. Other than that, the leg is just a curve going down. And you've got the boot, which is about there. So what we'll do is if we draw that line down over for the boot, we can draw the inside of a thigh down, going all the way down to where the knee is, and then we can go using the curve of your hand, you can do the outside of a thigh, the boot just needs to be a little bit wider than the leg. And then that can just curve down to where a knee is. Then we want the calf which is quite bulbous out down to a very thin slim ankle down here so you've got the knee going down and we just want the calf curling out a little bit down to a thin ankle and then we want the calf on this side curving out and again coming right the way down to a very slim ankle now she's wearing high heels but you can't just see the back of the heel on this shoe but you can on this one when we get over here but you just need to imagine there's the back of the heel going down to the toe and then you've got finishing off the shape of the shoe and really there's a thin heel that's going right the way down back there but there you have half of Mrs Incredible of Elastigirl's body done on that side so now we're going to do on this side we're going to join up and we're going to start from the thumb as I say you don't have to carry on from up here because you've got your construction lines in so the thumb is a little bit of a triangle there and we've got a little box coming down to make the fingers this finger is just slightly curved and then that finger is pointing out and then that finger is pointing there and we've got a slight wrist coming up to just above where the belt is so you want that curve going down to that slight wrist do the line over to the top go down to the slight wrist and her elbow carries on and then you've got a right arm going behind there 
shoulder curving over and then you've got the top of her upper arm just a slight little curve again using the shapes and the boxes really really helps now check out all of the other videos and I use all the same techniques so it's something that I just love doing to encourage you to pick up your drawing so that's the top of the thigh again we put the curve in <clears throat> and now we need coming down from above there that's where the knee is so we've got this knee is the top of the knee is there so we would have the thigh coming out and then going to join the top and then the inside of a thigh coming down to where the knee is and then we've got this lovely shape of the calf again coming down to a very slim ankle now right on the same level as the left foot but this foot is planted so you've got a simple triangle shape which is the top of a boot and then just at the back you can see a heel going up but it goes to that very thin ankle and then you can carry that up all the way and there very quickly you've got that dynamic pose outlined down so now we're going to put the actual pencil line, uh, <clears throat> pencil line, the felt tip pen line in, and then we're going to colour it in again as we did Mr. Incredible using cheap felt tips and pencil crayons. So I'm just following the lines that I actually put down first time. And you can keep checking the reference, it just helps you as you go. And it trains your eye to actually look so that's something that rather than just going over the line that you've done if you do actually check where you've put certain lines you can make slight corrections as you go along doing it so there that e is just a d even the shape of this hair it's a bit like just think a big capital d as we come down now i'm gonna go all the way down round to the bottom of a chin and then the side of her head comes out down a little bit and then that curves to join a chin and then we want a little ear showing there and then a nose and then a mouth and then we want underneath the top lip the bottom lip and it just has that slight curve on and we can actually fill in all of the black which is underneath the teeth little line in for the center of a teeth now we do the outside of a hair as I say that's just like a big D if you think of a shape like a D coming down behind the shoulder we then bring a neckline down down to a collar put the collar in and then we can move that collar over so now just filling all these shapes and these lines these outlines before we start whacking the color in because you did the hard work by putting the construction lines down that allows you to then have a lot more freedom but you can just check things as you go along just checking and getting your shapes right and your lines and that's the joy of drawing you're actually creating something as you go along using just these dead simple techniques now as I've explained before I started by copying cartoon characters which is really good fun 
when you've got so many good cartoons around to inspire you to do your own drawings. And it doesn't matter whether you're starting with something like Peppa Pig <clears throat> or something what seems as complex as Mrs. Incredible. It's not actually that complex. Here we're doing a C as we go down. You're just using shapes, so it doesn't matter whether it's Peppa Pig, Mr. or Mrs. Incredible, or a complex car or a motorbike. Using these simple techniques, you're able to create really good dynamic art. And it's just a case of practice. And it's a joy to be able to do these and show you how simple it is. So here we're going down the line on or out of a right arm. Now we're going to put the belt in. There's a waistband over a belt that comes down over the trunks. And we've got a left thigh coming down her boot down to the knee, the left knee, and we've got the shape of the calf. Again, this I'm just describing the anatomy. And all drawing of people, even cartoon people and cartoon animals, works on the structure of their basic anatomy. And I think it's when I did Jesse from, from Toy Story, because people say, oh, I can only draw stick men. And I show how a stick man is a bit like the skeleton. And that's what you can do and then build the boxes up and cones and cylinders. But I want you to learn using these reference points by putting these construction lines down very, very quickly. That you can then do your drawings of whatever subject you want. It doesn't have to be cartoon characters. It can be anything. It can be a horse, it could be your pet, it could be a cat. So now we've got this right arm. And that's the joy that you actually get of creating stuff, being artistic. And I hope that you find these instructional and helpful just watching these images come together as I'm drawing them. So there the outline is down very very quickly and we're going to start to fill in the color but if i can find yeah there we go there's my eraser just clean it off a little bit if you got the end of your eraser gets dirty like there if you just wipe it on your trousers or a bit of cloth or even a bit of blank paper you can clean it up and then you can just start working on your actual drawing with a clean eraser because remember and you probably see it again the yellow the lighter colors of the felt tips will pick up sometimes the pencil but also sometimes the ink if your marker isn't a permanent marker it may well bleed your colors and you could be using watercolor as well but anyway there we go that's cleaned that out quite quickly so now we're going to start colouring in. Remember there's a white dot in the centre of the eye. So that's gone down quite quickly. Remember also if you want to test the colour you can always have a spare bit of paper and then you can see if you've got a right colour that you want to use next. So that's the orange for the belt. Now, what I want is a kind of highlighted bit is a more orangey red. And so I'm working on just bringing, filling the shape in with the highlighted colour. 
and we actually need I've missed the orange off on the Incredibles logo but I'm also filling this in quite quickly because it does you know I'm just doing this as a fun quick drawing to show you how simple it is to knock these kind of images up you spend a lot longer you, d you won't go over the lines as much so where's that orange gone we need that orange and I'll fill in the Incredibles logo bit we need that red back again I'm actually putting the shading down in now quite quickly didn't mean to but that'll do we can fill in this arm and we can fill in that slightly darker red just to start giving the form to the body now again using the pencil crayons oops I've put red on there it doesn't matter it's going to go black over the top of it soon but when we start using the pencil crayons we can add a little bit more gradation and tone and colour so see that's filling that in quite nicely just get black now and again when you fill in large areas quickly it's kind of satisfying as well and you can actually get a good range of felt tips that will allow you to have much more exact colors but they are quite expensive again there's a highlight in here I'll try and just leave a bit of space on each of the fingers but the pencil crayons will add that highlight on over the top And that's quite good and simple how quick it is to actually fill in a lot of the space again this hand there's not so many strong highlights so we can fill in a lot of that this leg it's pretty much a silhouette and the pencil crayons will allow us to put on a little bit more shape when we come to just add some of the tonal texture and that'll give a bit of the form that leg is pretty much quite a simple silhouette now we're going to fill in this leg and there's a bit of a highlight coming down this thigh so we'll leave that line of light there but there are some kind of little blue lines and we can just fill them in and add those on and you could even just fill it all in and just using the pencil cranes <clears throat> put the highlight on after anyway again this left leg is pretty much just a silhouette uh, sorry left leg left as you're looking at it here right leg and then you just got a slight little highlight down the side of that shoe and again a mask is pretty much just a silhouette <sighs> but we can add some kind of highlight to it when we put the flesh tones in in a second So 
that's predominantly gone down. So now we're going to do add some flesh tones and hair. She's got a lovely kind of ready chestnutty coloured hair. So what I'm going to do first is try a felt tip. So they're two kind of nice colours. So I'm just filling this in and I'm going in the direction of a hair just so as the lines match and it makes it easier when you're drawing over the top. So remember, use your pencils and your pencil cranes or whatever like a brush and go in the direction of the hair and that helps keep it a little bit more realistic so you just use the brushes as you would brushes the pencils as you would a hairbrush And that way you give shape and form to something as you're drawing it. So you can see I'm brush I'm doing this like hair brush strokes coming down, and you've got the shadow coming down. So there's obviously highlights here, but they'll be increased when I use the pencil crayons. And then that, that comes under the back of a head. It's quite good. Now I have missed her black collar. So we can just add that in. And that's something. I've also missed that. I filled it in orange. But that's the joy with when you use lighter colours, you can always go over them with darker colours. The inside of the Incredibles logo needs to be black. So there you go, that's that filled in. So now we need a bit of a flesh tone on Mrs Incredible. So, just, yeah, that's a nice kind of ready colour going in there. into her hair. These are the colours I picked up. Again, just have a load of pencils next to you. And crayons and just really enjoy using as many different colours as you can. Now, she has chestnut eyes. I'm just leaving that little highlight there. But now we're going to build up Mrs. Incredible's flesh. Now again, I'm putting in first a light tone all the way over of just a kind of flesh colour. And then you can add more. and just build up detail and shape and form because it's easier to add darker than it is to try and make it lighter especially with flesh tones so now we've got the shadow down the side of her nose and the shadow all down this side of her head just underneath a mask will be a little bit of a darker line 
you've got the two lines there and then we want a shadow caused by the hair coming down and then the same on this side we need to darken all of that down underneath the lips coming down to a chin and underneath the neck now on this side it's a little bit darker too and we've got the same shape of a nose a little triangle and the shadow coming down over the mouth around the side now this is quite warm peachy light so I'm just filling in flashing out the lighter bits over a nose and a cheek because we'll darken down these side bits even more again I'm going to use bit of a kind of a little purpley tinge on top of the peach down this side and again that's under here that's causing the shadow <sighs> now coming off under a nose you've got that shadow coming down and again that's coming down off under a mouth all the way down this side of a cheek and up the side of a nose and don't be afraid to experiment with different colours as well and you can find that the shades and the tints are actually very very good so I'm now going to use this direct orange because there's a nice orange glow in fact I've missed the shadow down there down this side of her face and under that of her head so I'm going to fill in that ear So now back with the purple and we need to fill in that ear, just the shape of her earlobe, just suggested very very slightly and that coming down on the cheek, again back up to the nose, indicate the nostrils. And then if you come back in with the flash over the top of that again you can increase the density and the intensity of the colour. And that makes it work so much better because you're building up layers of colour. So now I've got this different kind of purple and just increasing slowly and carefully the actual colours and the tints so I'm going to fill in with a bit of a darker orange what we'll do is because her eyebrows, eyeballs, eyebrows are in shadow so we'll fill that in with a light grey and then a bit of a darker grey again you can use this slightly lighter grey that can give you a little bit of form on the black Again, we can do this down here on the legs I'm using the side of it to 
just give you a little bit of form and delineation on the actual leg and the boot. This is how I said to you, even though you put it in as a shadow, you can actually use the pencil crayons after to give everything a bit of extra shape and form. So that's something that's very simple and quick to do. And we'll build that up in a second. Now, back to the flesh. What we need is colour a lips in using a bit of a red lightly and then going over with the flesh tone on top. The top lip is going to be shadowed and so I'm now just bringing in a bit of blue to really increase the depth of the shadow. Blue helps colours to recede as well. So let's go back to the purple. Intensify that down a bit. And put the flesh tone back on the top. So now we can increase the flesh on this cheek up a little bit, up to the highlight, and then down this side of the nose. Right the way down that side. Now what we can do is use a very darker brown and increase the shadows on the hair and it should help form everything around the head. A lot more. So again I'm doing the lines in the direction that a hair would go. And then the lines on the top and then you've got the dark under the back of the head here, under her ear over the top of her right ear and the shape of her hair sweeping down and you can see all of a sudden she's getting a lot more form and shape in the top of her head now what I'm going to do is run over all of this red with the red pencil crayon and the red pencil crane will also darken and intensify the waistband. And so that's giving a lot more colour and body over that red. And again, don't be afraid to go over the lines. because you're just drawing and having fun really, really quickly. So that's filled in nice and quick. So now, if you use a blue, and the red on top again, that gives you a deeper shadow. working with the red. So using the colour and the shape and the form you can actually use colour theory to help you create effects and shadows and form and shape. So I'm just now quickly giving some shadow lines onto a torso and her arm but I'm using the blue because that will make it look darker as you can see receding down if you use a 
brown as well on top of that. It's then mixing using the red, the blue and the brown to give you a lot of different colours and a lot of different tonal textures. So here we've got a much bigger darker shadow so I'm going to intensify the red that the hair is causing, putting the blue in and putting some blue in the hair as well. because that'll help send the colour back and help it to recede. So this is the thing where you can experiment with the colours and you can mess about and this is how you learn and this is how I've learned over the years. It's just by being free and having a go you can actually create really good vibrant art just by simply experimenting with the different colours. So now we need that brown so as we can darken the orange. If you put blue over a yellow or an orange colour you're going to get some kind of green. So I'm just using that brown to bring that in. Now down a leg you've got a bit of red reflected highlight and you can do that down a boots and down a gloves because the, the reflected light off that red will go onto that arm. Now I'm gonna fill in that with that grey and then you can add extra colour on the top. So what we want is a light blue on the top of there we've got light blue going down but we've got a much lighter blue we can indicate that we've got the red little reddy brown tinge down here again on the shoes and on the thigh we've got little highlights now what we want is this kind of ochre colour going right the way up there just kind of indicated on there and again on this side and then we can just darken everything down using the black in a moment but again we've got the warmth so on a mask underneath I'm just putting a little tinge of that ready orange and again that's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to use black pencil crayon to feather that highlight in. And fill in some of these shapes. So we've got it's just by using colour you're creating the form and the shape and the tone of everything that's in the drawing and there was a great painters movement called the impressionists where they kind of used blobs and shapes and that's something that you, if you think about it, you, you're making these marks and you're making an impression and you're trying to convince yourself and other people who are going to look at what you've drawn that they are seeing exactly what you want them to see. So in this instance, I want you to see 
a drawing of Elastigirl, Mrs. Incredible, or as her normal human name is, Helen Parr. And it's all just an illusion created by Marx. Hopefully you've seen, and now we're coming back to the flesh colours again. So now I'm pressing on really hard to bring up that flesh with all those other colours that are underneath. And that shadow, so you've got that curve there underneath the chin, and then you've got the strong shadow coming off her nose. And then a forehead just filling in some of that colour. And then down this side of her chin. It's not as dark as on that side, but the colour does come up. So your strongest highlight <laughs> is here, just where the light is hitting her nose and her eye. So anyway, I think that's all right. I think, in fact, all we need to do really is possibly just put a few yellow highlights and these ochre colour highlights into a hair right on the top. And that is pretty much it. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. I know these are a little bit longer, double the length of just a pencil drawing, but that is how to draw Mrs. Incredible. I hope you've enjoyed that and please do like and subscribe. Check out all the other how to draw videos in the playlist. There's now over a hundred and just enjoy your drawing and come back for more how to draw videos in the future. Thanks very much. Ta-da.